Great. Okay. Mm -hmm. Welcome to What the F is Going On in Latin America and the Caribbean, Code Pink's weekly YouTube program of hot news out of the region. In partnership with Friends of Latin America, Massachusetts Peace Action, and Task Force on the Americas, we broadcast every Wednesday at 4.30 p.m. Pacific, 7.30 p.m. Eastern on Code Pink YouTube Live. Today is a special edition celebrating um, Chile's presidential elections on Sunday, December 19th. Our episode is entitled Neoliberalism Dies in Chile. On December 19, a left of center millennial who rose to prominence during an anti-government protest in 2019 was elected Chile's next president after a bruising campaign against a free market firebrand likened to Donald Trump. With 56% of the votes, Gabriel Boric handily defeated by more than 10 points, lawmaker Jose Antonio Cast, who tried unsuccessfully to scare voters that his inexperienced opponent would become a puppet of his allies in Chile's Communist Party and upend the country's vaunted reputation as Latin America's neoliberal prototype. In a model of democratic civility that broke from the polarizing rhetoric of the campaign, Cast immediately connected, or excuse me, immediately conceded defeat. Meanwhile, outgoing President Sebastian Panera, a conservative billionaire, held a video conference with Boric to offer his government's full support during the three month transition. Among many things, Boric campaigned with the promise to fight climate change by blocking a proposed mining project in what is the world's largest copper producing nation. He also promised to end Chile's private pension system, the hallmark of the neoliberal economic model imposed by the dictatorship of General Augusto Pinochet. He has said, we are a generation that emerged in public life demanding our rights be respected as rights and not treated like consumer goods or a business. We know there continues to be justice for the rich and none for the poor. And we no longer will permit that the poor keep paying the price of Chile's inequality. Joining us today to discuss this historic victory in Chile is our friend and guest, Patricio Zamorano. Patricio is a political analyst and the director of the Council of Hemispheric Affairs, COHA, C O H A dot org. Patricio is a Chilean citizen living in the United States. He voted yesterday at the Chilean embassy in Washington, DC. And some of you may recognize him today. He has been our guest multiple times, our Chilean expert, and uh, particularly uh, joined us when we were talking about the national referendum to rewrite the Chilean constitution. So welcome back, Patricio. I'm so happy for you and your fellow countrymen. This is such an exciting day. Thank you so much. Well, next day of a very historic day yesterday it was impressive because uh, all of us were absolutely surprised because we, we didn't know what was going to happen because uh, polls were absolutely wrong. Uh, most polls uh, predicted uh, almost a mathematical uh, tie b between Cast and Boric. And at the end of the day, it was impressive, uh, the huge advantage between 10 and almost 12 points. That's the range that, that we're handling still with 99% of the, of the counting done. So it, it was a big surprise. It was really, really a remarkable show of conviction of, of uh, a, a big percentage of, of the population, more than 56% of the vote uh, that elected uh, uh, Gabriel Boric as the new president of, of Chile, the youngest president ever. With uh, um, uh, when he becomes the president uh, on March next year, uh, he will be 36. So he's the youngest president ever. So a new generation, a new generation, and and he represents a generation as you that grew up under this severe neoliberal project imposed on Chile in 1973. Can you why don't you share with our with our audience a little bit? about that experience of growing yes. up under such a severe system sure uh, well boris is is younger than me but he he was able to uh, he was able to have some um some connection with the past but not entirely people like me we we were children during the dictatorship and and of course uh, it created a huge mark 
a psychological mark, a political mark, an ideological mark in my generation. Boris was uh, raised during the 90s, as, as you explained, um, where all the neoliberal experiments were applied with uh, certain levels of, of, of um, social democracy, uh, a, basically a system that was uh, controlled by the ghost of the dictatorship for a long time. We, we have to remember that the constitution was still the constitution of Augusto Pinochet, uh, approved uh, in an illegal way under repression, under coup d'etat, under dictatorship uh, in the early 80s. And then uh, Boris was a witness uh, because he he was part of the struggle as well. He he was part of that uh, social movement that actually was uh, trying to solve, especially the the education uh, crisis in Chile. So Boris was in the streets actually as a young student and later as a leader of of the uh, systems of public universities in Chile. So he he knows he knows what happened after the dictatorship. He could see uh, the failure of the system. So that's why uh, his uh, plan to govern Chile is really progressive in so many aspects. And that's why uh, the election of yesterday was or Sunday was extremely polarized because he represented an absolutely different view of uh, in comparison to cast the the extreme right wing uh, candidate that was actually re representing Pinochetism again <laughs> after after so many decades of the end of the dictatorship it's unbelievable how cast was was very obvious that uh, he represented that set set of values so definitely the election on sunday was a confrontation of two chiles totally different totally contradictory and in that sense it's very refreshing that the population of the country selected uh, the progressive views of boris and all what he represents no it's really um I think the political and economic ramifications of his election, his campaign and ultimate election are fabulous. And I also love the fact that he's a whole new generation. You yeah, know, that's, he's 35. I just I, I love what that in itself represents. Yes, because uh, we have to remember that uh, uh, he represents uh, people who uh, have or has sub, have some connection with the dictatorship, but also have a connection with the, with the future, uh, and and I believe that's very healthy because uh, he re recognized the human uh, cost that the dictatorship uh, created, uh, but he's able to separate from that generation in a healthy way because we have to remember that he's breaking up with the traditional political parties, including the center right, center left, center left parties that negotiated with Pinochet. So uh, I'm part of that generation as well as uh, even though uh, Gabriel is younger than me, I'm, I'm also part of the generation from the 90s uh, the, who witnessed the negotiation. And that negotiation was uh, disgusting for a lot of people like me and 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 all the younger ones because we didn't we didn't um, we didn't accept uh, the compromise that the center left uh, parties did uh, to guarantee the uh, uh, governance is what they said but at the end of the day what they did was uh, to uh, solidify a uh, whole institutional framework what that was extremely repressive uh, based on private uh, enterprise uh, and applying the laws of the market to uh, key elements of any society like health health system uh, the the pensions were privatized the health system was privatized the educational system was privatized and basically created a uh, uh, a society based on castes, based on money, based on incomes. So you have great health, you had great pensions, and you had a great education, if you had the incomes. So that's why a, a, a Boris a, is product of that generation of people who found that negotiation, that compromise, absolutely unacceptable. And that process took 30 years. Finally, as you mentioned, we are writing a new constitution now. So Boris is part of the same movement. So it's going to be very interesting to see him as a president uh, leading the way or empowering this new constitutional assembly who uh, that needs to write um, a new constitution for the country uh, by 2022. 
so I think um, let's talk, let's explain to our audience a little bit mm -hmm. about the Constitution mm -hmm. and um, why this is so important for um, a left of center president to be leading this way because so much of the privatization, the neoliberal model was enshrined in the constitution. Exactly, yeah. Yeah, I mean, uh, Pinochet was was uh, very careful on uh, creating a constitution that would validate uh, his view of the economy, his view of the, of the social uh, framework of the country. So uh, uh, the constitution has uh, the 1980 constitution has a lot of elements that are like 100% authoritarian. Uh, it declared uh, that the uh, pension system could be uh, privatized or open to private hands. It, it created a way to open health and education sectors uh, to be uh, handled in a private way. So it is there. It is there. All those, all those markers that are extremely conservative, they are there. Uh, it also created um, a language that um, uh, gave the armed forces of Chile a saying in the institutional framework of the country, even uh, giving them the right to intervene if the if the basis of the institutional framework of the country were were to be affected, and 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 in the language also identifying a socialism or communism indirectly as something that a uh, was not be wasn't going to be allowed in the country. So it's really a very conservative um, uh, text that uh, is a miracle that have been. Well, it's not a miracle. We know why it survived right. so long because of this compromise. This compromise I was I was talking about. It was one of the key elements. Some elements were reformed. That's that's totally true. Certain. Um, certain uh, conditions were actually changed, but the core of the constitution was actually a, a, a very, very strong still. Uh, so that's why it's, it's very important to uh, wipe out that part of, 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 um, a, of heritage from the dictatorship. We need to really uh, refund the country. The country need, needs to uh, create a new contract between the state and citizens, a contract based on social justice, a contract based on solidarity. We need to eliminate uh, any element related to the roles, the rules of the market related to the health of Chileans, the education, pensions. Uh, Boric uh, has a huge, a huge weight on his shoulders because he needs to deliver exactly that. And he's not going to do it alone. He has uh, uh, hundreds of, of deputies, uh, 150 something deputies who, uh, who need to write this new constitution. They have nine months. Uh, since July uh, this this year, if they have the need, they can expand it to one year. So by July, between April and July next year, that constitution should be done, uh, completed, and then we need to have a new referendum to uh, to ask the population if they accept this new constitution. So that that's approximately mm -hmm. the big challenge that uh, uh, Boris is 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 gonna have. And if everything goes according to plan and according to the the laws that created this new constitution, uh, Boris will be the president who is going to sign it, which is which is very cool. It's like so exciting. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I mean, it's so exciting that he, he's the one that will be in office to help help guide it. One, as we mentioned before, it's it's just a, a new generational vision of the country, mm. uh, of Chile's place in the hemisphere and the rest of the world, and his political and economic vision. It's just really sure. it's. So I, I feel almost guilty as it's so exciting for so many of us outside of Chile. I can't even imagine what it's like for those of you who are Chilean. It must just be almost almost unbelievable. Sure, because it's a, it's, it's a whole story that um, it was not possible just, just two years ago. We have to remember how fast this process has been. I think Chile has these interesting uh, historic things uh, Having the Salvador Allende government being being destroyed uh, in a huge surprise to the rest of the world, like a democratic government trying to create this this socialist uh, dream, uh, very similar to Europe. Actually, nothing really very radical, but but it was a, a attack uh, viciously by by 
by the right wing sectors of the country. And then 40, 50 years later, to have now a new coalition of, of younger generations with the support of the of the Communist Party, we have to remember that the Communist Party is part of the coalition that gave this new president to the country. So it's really a failure, an ideological failure of the dictatorship and all the supporters that still uh, CAS had still 30% approximately of the vote, uh, like a hardcore vote. Uh, we have to remember that he won the the first round of these presidential yes. elections. So we have still between 25-30% of the population who agrees with, with Pinochet values uh, uh, in some way. And we need to recognize that it's part of the democracy, it's part of the views that every single Chilean has uh, about the country. Uh, but. Uh, but the fact that the Communist Party, for example, is part of the government now that is offering governance to the country, a whole cycle of history after that, uh, thousands of leaders killed, tortured, exiled. I mean, it's very, it's very important morally that the Communist Party now is, is showing that it has the capacity to govern in peace and hopefully uh, the United States and all the powerful countries are not going to intervene with that and they're going to just let Boris to govern. We really need that. The country is 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 in such a huge and I'm not sure if I can I can explain this enough, but Chile right now is under a huge level of depression, of social depression. People are exhausted, people are desperate. Uh, the COVID-19 situation made things worse. We have to remember the social unrest came before COVID-19. Right. It was extremely violent in the streets. The repression was awful. People losing ice balls because of uh, um, rubber bullets used by the police. Uh, women being raped, uh, dogs being used. I mean, it was exactly like the dictatorship in, uh, in terms of the streets. So it was a really, really hard thing to face. And then on top of that, we have CODIV. Uh, and on top of that, we still have this neoliberal system that govern the health, the education, and the pensions of every single Chilean. So the country is exhausted. So we really need to give Boris an opportunity here because we need to fix so many things at the same time uh, in just four years. So this is, I, I'm not sure how far Boris is, is going to be able to, to go. Uh, we have to remember in Chile, we are no, we don't have immediate uh, consecutive re-election. Uh, so that's a problem. I don't agree personally as a political science guy. I, I don't agree with the four years. I think it's too short especially if the president is doing a great job. So, well, in this case, those are the rules. So Boris will be able to govern just for four years. In four years, he needs to progress so much. And then uh, who knows who is going to be the next president, right? Well, that will be up to him and, and, the, and, uh, and his coalition to help develop and mentor new leadership. Yep. Mm -hmm. But um, I didn't realize, I guess I didn't realize that... Um, that it was one four-year term and cannot run for re-election. Wow. Yeah. Uh, and I'm sure there's some historical reasons for that that are well-intentioned also, but in this sure, case- sure. He, can be re he can be re-elected, but after, after a new period. So not, oh, okay. not, it's, it's not, not consecutive. consecutive. It's not consecutive, but after that, he can apply again. Yeah. Bachelet okay. did it Pinier as well, right? Is it true. Yes, yes, that's true. I had forgotten that. So this is a, a real example of the need to have a good ground game, good, good social movement and community and labor organizing under the party to develop continuing leadership. Exactly. And that's and a if, really good example of why that's of movement building and the necessity for it. Sure, sure. Uh, I just want to, I just want to comment also, Terry, because uh, we need to understand the reality of things as well, because Boris won is, is true. We have a new constitution that, that is being written by a large majority, more than 70% of the deputies writing the, the constitution are a center left. Uh, so we have that cover in terms of the needs of very uh, strong progressive reform that the country is demanding. We have to remember that almost 80% of the population in a referendum said that they accepted, they wanted a new constitution, almost 80%. So we're talking about a, a lot of right-wing people that also agree because everybody agrees. So that said, we have to remember that Boris is going to face uh, the, um, the work of president with, uh, with no Congress. Uh, this is something true. that we need to uh, 
add to the analysis because I have seen a lot of reactions, positive reaction, but we have to remember that he doesn't have control of Congress. The uh, conservative forces in Chile, they still control approximately 50% of both cameras, of both houses, Senate and, and Camara de Diputados. So we have a problem there because Boris will have to negotiate. Even he has to negotiate with the center left parties that were left outside this historic moment. They are supporting him. Still, I'm talking about the Socialist Party. I'm talking about the Christian Democrats, the PPD, PPD uh, Partido por la Democracia, and others. And they, they are they are saying that they're not going to be in the in the opposition, but that doesn't mean that they're going to accept absolutely everything because uh, uh, the Communist Party and the Frente Amplio or the all the Ample uh, Front or the White Front. I'm not sure how you translate that, but uh, El Frente Amplio, which is the 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 um, one of the major uh, components of Boris uh, coalition, they they don't have enough seats. Uh, to do anything. So they really need the support of the whole center left. And of course, uh, the right wing parties are going to make sure that Boris doesn't progress enough. So because they are going to protect their, their interest, they still own the country economically, they still own the country financially. So they, they're, they're going to make sure that those big corporations, big interests are not touched. Yeah. You know, we're see we saw where well, we're facing something or a witnessing something very similar with the um, outcome of the presidential elections in Honduras on November 28th as well. You know, so many of us are so excited about Xiomara Castro's election and, and again by a huge percentage, but um, it's gonna, her success is going to, like with Chile, is going to depend on what sort of Congress is, um, is you know, the composition of Congress and that, that those elections aren't finalized yet in Honduras. so. It's a, it's, it's fascinating to me, and we see the same thing in the United States too. There's one way that that the citizenship votes for president, and then often is another way that you vote more locally for your congressional representation, and it's it's that clash often. It's fascinating to me that there's so much of a of a difference in Congress in Chile, given how many people voted to rewrite the Constitution. Mm -hmm. It's really kind of a real mix of political contradictions right now, as you said. I think. It, yeah, because of be the timing. Yeah, because of the timing, they're they're not coordinated. So at, at some point, we, uh, Boris may may have a chance, but uh, he will need to even even if he controls uh, the center left controls both both um, cameras. Still. Uh, we have to remember that we have parties that were not part of the coalition that competed against him. We have to remember that carefully that um, he doesn't have automatically the vote of the parties that, uh, why? Because Boris itself, he criticizes, of course, the, the heritage of, of Pinochetism and all those countries, especially Renovación Nacional and Unión Democrática Independiente, both both two right wing parties, but he also criticized the center left uh, strongly for the reasons that I just, uh, I just explained. Not only the the fact that they they compromised in an immoral way for so many years, but also the lack of capacity to connect with the needs of the people, to defend the social agenda, to somehow uh, create the conditions for the whole uh, huge social unrest that, that we have uh, that we have had for 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 the last couple of years, um, and also uh, and also the cases of corruption. I mean, there's a lot of corruption involved. Uh, uh, so uh, that's a failure. So, and Boris was very clear during the campaign to actually target those sectors as well. So that's why it's very interesting the fact that he got so many votes. We we have to remember also Terry. He got more votes than any other president, more than 4.5, 4.6 million votes. Uh, is 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 the biggest participation since the vote uh, was declared voluntary. Is the biggest participation ever. Uh, also, uh, so there's a lot of good things about this. People were really mobilized uh, against the traditional political parties. All the, all the parties that are part of the coalition like, are extremely young. The uh, the party of <laughs> the political party of Boris is just was founded in 2019. 
eh, convergencia social, <laughs> just, just wow. uh, three years ago. I mean, it's unbelievable. It's because that shows you, Terry, that Chileans were eager for changes. They, yeah. they were eager to try something else because I can tell you, as I said before, the level of social depression in the country, uh, mentally, spiritually, is just it's just extremely deep. So deep. So that's why I think uh, Boris, the fact that he's he's younger than than 40 years old and and all that represents a fresh air, like a fresh yeah. air yes. into the system. Yeah. yeah. No, it's really, really, it's really exciting, and it's. It's exciting to, it really, to me, on a very personal level, is very exciting to see, you know, a, a whole new generation. And I think I, I would like to see that influence young people across the hemisphere, <laughs> to, for it to be an example for so many young people across the hemisphere. And let's, in our, in our final minutes, Patricio, let's talk about what um, yesterday's um, election results could mean for the composition of the hemisphere of the Americas. Mm -hmm. I think before we went went live, I shared with you, you know, my personal observation, and I have shared this on other programs as well, um, especially having been uh, Nicaragua, Venezuela, and Honduras November for all that whole mm -hmm. series of elections. There really is where I, 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 I hesitate, hate, I hesitate to say it, but I so feel it that we're in this moment where the ship is like just starting to turn away from US led unilateralism and into creating a hemisphere that could quite possibly be multilateral. Sure, I mean, uh, we have those, those uh, uh, signals and I think it's just the failure of capitalism in, in its mm -hmm. pure form, because we have to remember, we don't have to lie ourselves. It's not like the whole continent agrees with uh, socialism in that sense. We, there is a core vote, people who actually have those values, uh, but we also have a huge amount of population who are just pragmatic and they really need to have a very quality of life, period. They really don't care if it's socialism or, or, or capitalism. All the surveys, uh, continental ones, they demonstrate that people uh, uh, are eager to, ha to have peace, to just to raise their children, to have a decent educational system, to have a health system, I mean, basic needs. Right. Um, and, and those needs were really, really um, uh, no well covered by, by this, Neo wave of, of of conservative governments that actually replace uh, the leadership in in some of the countries. Uh, in the case of Honduras, it was just a scandal how how this uh, de facto president was able to govern for so many years based on fraud. Uh, that was even a different process. We are not even talking about uh, political uh, needs. We were talking about uh, legal. Uh, yeah. issues they are with this yeah. president who also was uh, Juan Orlando Hernandez involved with 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 the uh, uh, illegal drugs trafficking and and all those scandals uh, uh, so uh, in in the case of Nicaragua a huge support uh, of continuation to the Sandinista movement uh, in Venezuela with all the sanctions the COVID-19 hunger uh, the situation, we know that the situation in the country is extremely bad and that they still, they still supported yeah. the, the government. And then in Chile, a very neoliberal country, uh, the um, this this beauty of a model for so many people uh, believing uh, 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 or, or, or actually uh, thinking that this mask was was real. And, uh, and then uh, with this answer of the population supporting Boris, it's extremely clear that uh, Chileans do not believe in neoliberalism in that sense because the system itself has created a huge social mess for 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 millions. So uh, 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 I think it, uh, it's impressive how Codif has demonstrated uh, to a lot of to millions of Latin Americans the failure of capitalism. I think. The market, the market itself was 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 crashed in a horrible way. Uh, so in in that sense, in that sense, this pandemic um, showed the failures right? that the governments were not able to to handle that uh, because uh, they are based on markets. They are based on rules of the market. 
So we just need a, a pandemic then, and then this this market gets totally totally destroyed, and with that the uh, the life of millions of people. So that's that's a that that's a lesson I think that that we have learned very 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 closely. I I would agree with that. I really think that. Latin America and the Caribbean really saw, well, I think all of the Americas, I would argue the entire world, but the Americas in particular, we saw those systems with privatized healthcare systems, including the United States, were completely ineffective at responding sure. to the mm-hmm. pandemic for the vast majority of its citizens. And those, those nations, even if they did not have, you know, economic, uh, you know, large scale economic success, they were still able to respond on a state level for their citizens. I think the other thing that became very apparent um, was that there's now almost a, um, aside from political and economic cooperation among nations in Latin America, there's Mm -hmm. also a realization to connect on a humanitarian level because Mm -hmm. of the pandemic. And I think that's reshaping the Americas. It was very clear that the global North, including the United States had no solutions for for our neighbors to the south and that's really even among center to center right governments there's this desire to create this need to create a multilateral system of engagement sure sure. we need to see though we we need to see how boris is gonna react uh, with venezuela for example Mm, uh, he doesn't belong to the bolivarian uh, um, circle in that sense uh, we know that that he has a maybe a better a better view about Cuba. We need to see because uh, there is a principle uh, based on being against sanctions or an embargo. Um, I would wait. It's true that the Communist Party is part of the coalition, but there is no there is no doubt that we will have tensions there when the when the Communist Party that, that is Bolivarian is. I'm sure that we will witness uh, tensions. Uh, inside the the government coalition about that so we need to see we need to wait what's going to be the the actual international praxis of Boris when it comes to imperialism for example that's that's a very good question it's an it's an open question i think we need to wait a little bit more um so i know people from from that sector i know that we have this this contradiction that they have a very a very progressive policy when it comes to cuba and the the illegal aspects of the of the embargo for more than 50 years, et cetera, et cetera. But they don't have the same criteria for some reason for Venezuela, for example. Right. So I think we will see that contradiction in the next months. But at the same time, I, I believe that Boris will be very focused in domestic policy. I, I can see him extremely busy. He really has to reorganize complex systems. We, he needs to... Um, and at the same time, trying not to create um, a, a worse situation because we need to remember still we have powerful interests in Chile. Uh, the pension system is extremely, extremely valuable for these big companies. They are making uh, billions of dollars every single month out of the pensions of, of, of all, all Chileans. And uh, he needs to touch that system in the best way possible uh, without being destroyed by these big corporations. The, the same thing with the health system. We, we have extremely powerful companies because it, it is a business. So, right. uh, and also he has to touch a lot of interest of the private sector in terms of universities. So it's it just a lot of things that he needs to focus on urgently. On top of that, he's dealing with a pandemic. Uh, and on top of that, he's dealing with a new constitution. So I, I would predict that Boris- Thank goodness uh, he's young. <laughs> uh, he's young enough to have a lot of energy because this is gonna be tough. This is gonna be a tough thing, I, I think. Today, tomorrow, for the next week, he's going to be enjoying the the um, the honeymoon. But at some point, he he will realize, okay, I need to I need to deliver. I need to start working seriously on on all these things. He has three months to form a new government, uh, to find new ministers of a, of his cabinet. Uh, the discussions will be very intense because he has a, a broad. Co- coalition uh, to integrate 
So we will see, we will see who will be in charge of education ministry, who will be in charge of, of the health ministry. Uh, well, the, the deputy of his campaign, uh, she likely will, will be the minister of, of health. Um, so we have key elements here, labor movement, who is gonna be the, the one who is gonna represent uh, the new social contract be between the state and the workers, the unions that were hit for, for so many decades, very similar than what we see in the US. Unions are, uh, they're really fighting back. Um, to survive and to and and to get stronger we have the situation of immigration in chile as well because chile is a hub for new immigrants uh, so there's so many things inside of the country domestically that uh, i think the foreign policy will be really a secondary or 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 third priority there's no doubt about that you know the domestic the success uh, you know a, a successful domestic program will send a message to the rest of the hemisphere yeah. mm -hmm. too, right it'll ripple out you know beyond the borders so patricio we all send you so much congratulations best wishes goodwill and um so excited for you and your countrymen and i hope you come back to give us some updates as we watch maybe perhaps once um the new president is inaugurated and we can watch um the evolution of chile is going to be such a phenomenal um project um mm -hmm. to support and and watch so i'm so happy for you and i'm so thankful you had time to talk with us today i want to remind our audience that you've been watching what the f is going on in latin america and the caribbean code pink's weekly youtube program of hot news out of the region we broadcast every wednesday at 4 30 p.m pacific 7 30 p.m eastern today's episode is a special edition celebrating um Chile's presidential elections yesterday, Sunday, December 19th. And also be sure to catch Code Pink Radio, which broadcasts on WBAI New York City, WPFW Washington, DC, every Thursday morning, 11 a.m. Eastern. So thank you, Patricio. I'm so thank happy you, you had time for us today. Always a pleasure to talk with you. Thank you so much also, Terry. It's been a pleasure.